How's it going, lads? Data 782 here with episode 5 of Rebuilding Trapani Calcio, the lowest rated team in Italy on FIFA. Last episode, we went through five matches where we had a very nice record going, securing four wins and one draw to keep us in second place in the league table. Right behind Empoli, who are having a wild season, they have 11 wins, uh, no losses, one, no draws, and one loss. While well, we have eight wins, four draws, and no losses. We're the only team in the league that does not have a loss yet but we are still in second also our goals against only four goals against just not scoring quite enough because of those draws I suppose but 8-4-0 is our record in this episode we're gonna get matches 13 to 17 done here in Serie B we're going to take on Stabia followed by Crotone, Salerno, Ascoli and then we'll finish it off with Venezia before the next episode will be a wild one as we begin with Empoli and then two days later take on Udinese in the Serie A Tim Cup so that's gonna be a wild one but for this episode we have to focus on just Serie B and we're gonna get our next training session done as our players continue to grow looking very good Hoiver, van de voort and all these guys so like always let's get through these and an a there finished off so c c a b a everyone getting their stats going up which is nice uh, especially for this team where we really rely on these youth players because we have our entire uh, maybe 60 percent of our team here on loan so getting into our first match of the day against Stabia, we're going to try and get to 31 points in the league table. And I think I also need to figure out uh, who are we going to go first squad, second squad. We'll go first squad, first squad. Uh, probably most of this episode will be first squad. I don't think the second squad is going to see much time on the pitch this episode. So let's go ahead and put uh, three in the back or four in the back for this one. Uh, let's go four in the back at Hoiver some time. He's up to a 66 now which is nice. He was a 63, I think, when he began. So Petanari can come in as a sub if Biabiani gets tired. Same with Koulibaly and Luperini for the mid. Yeah, I think that's good to go. And then next game, we could probably go three in the back to rotate some people in and out, like Piriello, Petanari, so forth. Let's do it here at home in the pouring rain. Trapani and Stabia, here we go. Here's Ojer, Moses Ojer, who, oh wow, who broke the sound barrier last episode. A little turn and burn. Oh, you have to finish that, Bello. Zip! Oh, wow. Oh, how do you miss? Moses Ojer, wow, what an opportunity that was. Oh, didn't get it, didn't strike it squarely. Be a Biani. Let it fly. Oh, just gets a finger to it. Salvatore Aloy, a shameful tackle. That should be a red. With all the reds that I get, Malata with a shameful tackle. Let me guess, he's just going to get a warning. Uh, okay, gets a yellow. I have all the, all the boys coming in saying kick him out. Fabrizio Malata, a shameful tackle. Uh, unfortunately, I have no one who can even like take free kicks here. Uh, this guy has 63 free kick accuracy. Yeah, looks like it's definitely going to be him. Let's try and put it right there. Bing. Oh my goodness, that was actually pretty close. Well, Scapti with his 63 free kick accuracy, putting on a little show for us. Good tackle there, as we're coming down to the end of the half. Last chance. Biabiani puts it over for Moscati. Here we go. Moscati, last chance. Brings it back. Moscati, Biabiani overruns it. Gets it back, though, in the middle. Rip it. Oh, wow, what a finish. Ding, 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 ding. From... Luigi Alberto Scalia wearing the captain's band. What a beautiful finish here at the end of the half to put us up right before we head into the locker room with big smiles on our faces. Moscati Bibiani overran it, regained possession, gave it to Scalia who cracks it on his right. He's left footed. And our captain puts us up. Not our first, no, more of our vice captain or second vice, but he's captain for the first team, which plays most of the games. Luigi Alberto Scalia, who usually gets the assists, and he ends up picking up his first goal here in Serie B right before the half. Oh, he sees that run. Oh, yeah. Luigi Alberto Scalia. Here he is. Luigi gives to Biabiani, who lets it fly, and there's number 10 for Biabiani. What's he gonna do, a little. Okay, that's a weird celebration, but alright. That's double digits for Biabiani. I didn't check before the match, but a week ago that would have put him for sole possession of number one in the standings. Hits off a defender and goes in. As of the moment, we'll say that he leads Serie B in scoring with goal number 10. 
of the year from Scalia. A goal and an assist for Scalia now tonight. Stavi have not had many opportunities this match. The defense has just been locked down defending. Can't always score the goals, but the defending, we have it. 88th minute or 89th minute, we'll just bring in a couple quick subs. So everyone's smiling with their playing time. Piccoli can come on, as well as Luperini. And Koulibaly, give them some time for a couple minutes so they all smile. Looks like this one's going to end 2-0 in our favor. Oh, nice play. Oh, an easy save for Van der Voort as they squander their pretty much only opportunity in this match as we take game one of this episode 2-0. to nil. Bibiani player of the match with a 9.4 rating, but Scalia with a 9.3, also very respectable. So Empoli also wins to go up to 36 points, we're at 31. Uh, Ragusa has 11 goals to lead the league, and Bibiani and Tutino are tied with 10. Another training session to get in here quickly. So D, C, B, D, A, as all those stats go up, very nice. And now we'll continue simulating on to our next match, will be next week. So our next game here, up against Crotone, a couple of conversations, final support about this guy that I was scouting, uh, 63 overall center mid, but why not, short list him, he looks okay. And player chat here with Tolomello. Uh, I've been in pretty good form lately, hope you're not going to bench me. Uh, well, you're a rotation player, Bello. Uh, whatever, I'll consider it. Makes you happy, great. So we'll go for the three in the back lineup. I think I want to replace Fornazier with Piriello. He has a better pace. I uh, like having him in there, so Fornazier can be on backup there. Ojer has been playing a lot recently, so I'll give him the night off, and I'll bring Tolomelo in so that he can play as a sub, so that he can be happy. Uh, and besides that, I think we'll, all, we'll say the same with everything else. Actually, I'll put Aloy over Koulibaly because he's been playing better recently. Petanari and Biabiani up top, perfect. So heading into this match, like we said, Biabiani one goal behind for the league lead, and we are five points behind Empoli. So it would be nice not only to try and catch up to them, but to continue to put space between La Spezia, Benevento, Perugia, Frosinone, all those guys, because we would like to get automatic promotion. We don't want to go into a playoff where things are up in the air. Sapani and Crotone, here we go. What in the world was that? I'm trying to slide for the ball and he pulls his head into the ground. What are you doing, Luperini? Yeah, take that yellow, you shameful pig. Gregorio, what are you thinking? There's a nice through ball to Scalia. Luigi Alberto Scalia to Biabiani. Rip that bell. Ooh, a low drive. Beautiful. Hit him with the frog. Oh, I forgot. Agile players don't do the frog. Biabiani does a backflip. Oh boy, nicely done from Scalia, like always. Puts it through right there. A low drive. You would think that the goalie would stop that, but I guess he was not anticipating it to go along the pitch like that, like a little carpet shot. And he just couldn't reach it. That's 10, sorry, 11 now on the season for Jonathan Biabiani. Ties him with Ragusa for top goal scorer in the league. Let's see if he, we can get him to 12 this match. Petani, Petanari, oh yeah. Biabiani, ooh, just gets a foot on it, but that is way wide on his left. Take him out, bro. There you go. The leg sweeper. Coltani, well done. Take a red, bro. You deserve it. Yeah, well, that's our third yellow of the match for Andrea Colpani as he gets our third. Well done, boys. Luperini can come off. We'll put uh, Tolomelo in, who wanted to get some playing time, seeing as we have so many yellows, and wouldn't mind getting him in there. Give him a little shot. Petinari, nice ball to Biabiani. Biabiani back to Petinari. That was some beautiful linking, but a big save from, I don't even know what his name is. Oh, here's a chance. Uh, again, there, but it's Ross back. Yeah, Ross back is the goalie. Terrible header by Aloy. Bro, give me Luca Toni in FIFA 14. Barely tap the shoot button and it just goes top shelf full power when you're heading the ball like that. Biabiani, nice through ball to Petinari. Is he gonna go inside out? Fools him to Biabiani. Oh, once again along the pitch. He fooled him again along the pitch. Gives respect. I'm sorry I had to disrespect you with the second along the pitch strike. I'm really sorry. And it's 2 0 as Biabiani now has 12 goals on the season to lead Serie B. Petinari fooled everybody to put all the attention on him. And Biabiani just came in and let it fly. Oh, it's a low strike for goal number 12 on the season 
in the 73rd minute. 91st minute now, we're gonna close it off. They're gonna do a nice little set piece with six different players coming in to do it, only to have the ball soar over the net. Two matches, two wins to start off this episode. Two down, three to go. Back-to-back uh, -back victories, and we are looking good. Once again, Biabiani, man of the match. Uh, Tolomello, appreciate getting me out, blah, blah, blah. Keep it up, Bello, good work. And now that's done. Now we're time for more training. DCAFA, as Hoiver goes up to a 67 overall. All of those four stats for Piccoli also went up as he gets closer to a 68, as he is our future striker on this team. Now we can simulate up to the next week's game. Biabiani is tied with Aragusa for the league leading goals, and Empoli just continued to win, though, as they're up to 39 points. 34 for us puts us a little bit of distance from sixth place Fosinone there, but La Spezia, Benevento, Perugia are all fighting. What do you want here? I noticed after the upcoming match against Salerno, your choice of captain is lacking the leadership traits, but as if these players have traits in their foreheads. I suggest you name Evacuo instead of... <laughs> what? The guy is a 34 pace playing on... He's lucky if he plays once every 10 matches. I mean, how am I going to make him captain? Oh, man, these guys. Oh, scouting report. Fantastic. Let's see if we found anyone with good potential in Italy. Okay, so this guy, potential 69 to 94, but... Really, when you do your scouting in FIFA, what you need to look at is the value. This guy's value is 70,000 euros, which means although his potential is 69 to 94, once I start to scout him more, it's going to drop to like 75 to 82 or something like that. So it's not really like a 90 to 94 potential kind of guy. It's likely on the lower end. This guy's value of 50k, he's garbage. 50k, garbage. 17 years old and 45k means he's really garbage with 65 potential. Reject. And this guy's 70k. So what I'm going to do is just continue to scout because there's no point in signing him now if he's just not uh, good enough. Plus, I don't think I even have the money to sign him. Enrico Del Prato, another guy that I was scouting. Nice. Okay. Captaincy suggestions. Who do, guys, who do these guys think they are? Biabiani. Okay, so Salerno, we're taking them on now, which is match three. Then we take on Ascoli for match four and Venezia for match five. So Salerno's a good team, I think. No, they're not that good. They're 4-2-8. and eight. Ascoli 3-4-7. and seven. Venezia 4-5-6. and six. So the next three games are against not very good opponents. So hopefully we can maybe get a little bit of squad rotation going. We'll try this out. Moscati can, can get the captain's ban. Del Monte will come in. Ben David. Del Prete. He's 33 years old and his stats are just going up. I've never seen someone's stats go up at the age of 33. Usually as, the, as soon as the clock strikes 12 on their 30th birthday, all their stats start to go down. But uh, Fornasie, Armini, Biabiani will start, uh, Piccoli will come in to sub, and all that good stuff. That's how we're going to roll for this match up against Perugia. That's how we'll be for match number three of five here against Salerno. Let's get it started. Hey, pre-game little warm-up. Me, hey, look at that curl on that ball. Man, I just never saw that. If only I could do that in a game. Just blast it top shelf. I never see any finesse curls like that. But anyways, here we go. Match number three. Derek Ray and Lee Dixon are here with us. Trapani and Salerno. Great slide by Ben David. Now here goes Moses Oger. Moses to Aloy. Bia Biani. Oh, bar down. Once again, that's like the third time this season, at least, third or fourth time in the season, B.A. Biani goes bar down. Nice cross. Bello straight to the security guard. We've only let in four goals in 14 matches. That's how good the lockdown defense is, or how bad the other teams are, to be honest. If you want, you know, if you want me to play at a higher difficulty, please let me know. It's, uh, it's not that easy, but it's also not super tough. But at the same time, I feel like if I go up a difficulty, it's just going to be a disaster. So I don't know. If, I don't know. Whoa. I don't know if I want to do that this season or maybe in the future from next season after we've been promoted. Because uh, City is already going to be tough even on this difficulty. That's why I originally put it at this difficulty, knowing that it would be a bit easier this season, but harder down the road. Oh, wow. Nice through ball. Right to the corner flag. Oh, wow. What a ball to Oger. He's going to bring it back and cross it in. He's going to write to Moscati, rip that Bellets. Oh, my match in his area right wide. Bro, Cech? Is that Alessandro Cerci? Hold on, they just brought him in for Lombardi. Is that Alessandro Cerci? Oh. Alessandro, I'm going to sing Alessio Cerci. Is that Alessio Cerci? I need to see this. Is that Alessio Cerci? 
Is that him? Oh my goodness, Alessio Cerci is on Salerno. Shout out to all you Cerci fans. Wearing his Verona jersey in that picture. Wow, former legend. A bello at Torino. He had a team of the season card at Torino. Went from Torino to Atletico uh, Madrid, I believe. Was it Atletico Madrid or Atletico Bilbao? No, I think it was Atletico Madrid. And then he goes to Verona, where he was supposed to be a legend with Cassano and uh, and Lee Sian Wu. Supposed to be the best trident in Europe. Didn't work out. Now he's on Salerno. Alessio Cerci. I gotta I gotta just scout him after. I'd love to get him on this team. That would be beautiful. Then David, Oger, Biabiani puts it right there. Salvatore Aloy. Oh, great save by the goalkeeper, Mikai. Monte to Aloy on his left. Oh, wait, it's right to a mellow finish left, but it was offside and it wasn't even close. Oh, wow, he fooled me like a boy. Oh, Freddy just ripped it into Heaven's Gate. That was a close one. Moscati for Biabiani. Here's a good opportunity. He's get it on his right, though. Biabiani! Oh, another low strike. He's going low these days. Just off the post and cleared out for a throw in. And that'll be it, boys. A nil-nil draw. Scoreless here between Trapani and Salerno. A well-fought game. Opportunities on both sides, but no one could find the back of the net. Actually, one shot, zero on target for Salerno. We had eight shots, just two on target, though. So I'd say that we should have won. I'll make sure to say that in the post-match interview, but I will subject you to watching those same questions over and over. Bel Prete, what does he say here, Bel? Thanks for putting me back in the team. I don't mind missing the occasional game, but I really need to play or I just can't be at the club. Aren't you here on loan, Bello? I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you. You're 33 years old. You're probably a father of four. And I have to pat you on the back and tell you I'm proud of you. We both have a good cry. Tears come out of our eyes. Nice little heart-to-heart. Vanderbilt's up to a 72 overall. You love to see that. Then we go B, 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 A as our meaning goes up to a 70 overall. Beautiful. As we just continue to get better here in Trapani. Similarly up to our next game, Biabiani is tied with Ragusa with 12 goals for the lead. As always with uh, Tutino there as well. We have 35 points. La Spezia and Benevento are right behind us. Empoli up there at 42. That's our next game here will be against Ascoli. We're going to go back to first team with three in the back. Uh, Pirello going to switch him out. No, Fornasia just played, so Pirello will play. Copani, Aloy, Luperini is going to switch with uh, Oger, who's become uh, like a son to me these last few episodes. I'll, I'll switch Hoiver with Fornasia here in the subs. Perfect, that's how we're going to roll. Here in match number four of five, we're at three, uh, two wins, one draw, looking to get another three points. Trapani and Ascoli, match number four, here we go. Nice chance early on, big save from Van Voort. One of the first saves he had to make in the last like three games. That was probably the biggest save that he's been faced, biggest shot that he's been faced with. Nice play. Biabiani has some space. Finish that bellow. Beautiful from Jonathan Biabiani. 1-0. He says, calm it down, boys. At the start of this episode, I, I missed recording it, but it said that he is projected for 30 goals on the season. And that's number 13 as he takes it smoothly and then rips it in the top corner. Goal number 13 to once again restore his lead atop the league's top scorers. 21st minute and we're up 1-0. to nil. Oh, good chance they break through the D and a nice save for Van de Voort as he didn't have to do much to stop it. Moscati back in the middle for Aloy. Aloy still has it. Gives it to Patinari. Beautiful play, but an easy stop for the Ascoli goalkeeper. Gives it to Biabiani, who lays it off to Aloy. Here's a good chance. Salvatore in the middle. Rip that Bellets. Easy save again. Come on, boys. Gotta lift that into the top corners. Credit where credit is due, but you gotta find those corners, boys. Five shots each with three on target apiece. Possession is in Ascoli's favor, 53 to 47. It's Petanari, just rip that bell. Ooh, nice diving save by Liali. Ooh, great save by Vandervoort. Ooh, another good chance, but that one just goes wide. And now we're gonna take this opportunity to make a couple of changes. I was actually looking before the match it's not, when I was saying Del Prete 33, his stats are going up. It's not actually his stats going up. It's his morale that makes his stats go up. 
So for example, uh, Evacuo here, I don't believe that his shot power is actually 80. I think it's like 68 or 670, something like that. But because he's very happy, I don't know why, his shot power is at 80. So maybe I bring Evacuo on, who can just rip shots. And also I think, um, Tolomelo, actually everyone's stats are up because everyone's very happy. I don't know why they don't show you that in game and they just show it to you before the game. But I think I'll go ahead and bring Koulibaly on for Kulpani and Aloy can, or who can go center defensive and no one can. So Koulibaly will stay center defensive mid and we're going to roll like that. Hopefully Eva Kool can just rip a shot. A classic Italian bellow. If that was him just getting subbed on, he looked like a 20 year old uh, blonde guy when he's like 34, probably a bit of a stomach. Good, gets, regains possession. He says, get off my back. Gives it to Biabiani. Gives it to Evacuo. Oh, right into the guy's stomach. Bello. I, I'm aiming it straight into the corner. These guys. Oh, Evacuo. That was one of his only chances to ever score this season. He barely gets any time on the pitch. Come on, where's Evacuo? Number nine. Rip that. Oh, my goodness. Looks nothing like him. Looks, uh... A young blonde boy, when he's dark-haired, wrinkled a little bit, tired from all his years of calcio. And, oh, nice diving stop by Vandervoort here in the final few seconds of this match. If we can hang on tight, we'll have three wins and one draw through the first four of five for today. Scalia, turn and burn, classic. Here he is, looks for Evacuo, and pff, the guy doesn't even know where he is, doesn't even know what planet he's on. As we win one to nil, Three wins, one draw with one match remaining. They ended up having five shots on net, but Vandervoort stood tall. Lupe Ini wants to talk to me here. Didn't even get to play last game. He says, thanks for bringing me back into the team. No problem, bro. Don't let it go to your head. No, you know what? I expect more from you. Keep, uh, keep working hard, bro. So now it's the next of the month. It's the first of the month moving into the month of December, which means people's overalls go up because as the clock strikes 12, the uh, the body just uh, improves. I don't know how it works. That it's always on the first of the month, but we'll take it. Del Prete and Pelliahulo are down one each. But Vandervoort has gone up six overalls now at a 72, which is fantastic. Hoiver up five. Piccoli is a 68. Armini is a 70. Colpani at a 66. Aloy at a 67 now. Tolomelo's growing. Uh, Del Monte, Fornasier, Danka, all these guys, Grillo, Grillo, whatever you want to call them. Moscati even going up, good. All right, nice to see all the improvements as, especially the guys that we want to see the most improvement from these four right here, the ones that we're training. So plus four, plus four, plus five, and plus six is beautiful. Next training session now for all those Papagallos. B, B, C, as some stats are going up. Piccoli's getting close to a 69. Uh, Armini gets a D, so nothing goes up for him. And then we'll race against the clock. And that's an A, so his ball control and his dribbling goes up, and he's up to a 68 overall. Love it. Holding on to second in the standings, the La Spezia and Benevento are uh, creeping up on us. Empoli keep on winning. They have 45 points now. As uh, my final scout report, I think, is in on Alessio Cerci, who I wanted to see. There he is, Alessio Cerci, 32 years old. He's 71 overall. He's worth 1.8 million. He has the curve, the sprint speed, the free kick accuracy. Uh, man, this guy was a legend. If I ever had extra money, I would love to pick him up, but I doubt by the time I have money, he'll still even be playing in, uh, in, the, in any league. So we're going to be taking on Venezia this game. Venezia... They're in the, the bottom half of the table, I believe. Yeah, they're 4, 5, and 7 in 14th place. And we're trying to hold on to our unbeaten streak. We are 11, 5, and 0. Oh, but look at Empoli, man. 16, 0, oh, and 1. If we get three points and go to 41, that'll be very nice. Biabiani is one goal behind Tutino and is tied with Ragusa with 13 for second in scoring. Uh, in this match, I think we're going to try out going back to the first squad, four in the back, get Grillo and uh, Hoiver some playing time. And this is what I'm talking about here. So the shot power, okay, so the shot power is actually 80, but if shot power is plus five, it's 85 in game because of how happy he is. He used to be, it doesn't make sense. He didn't play any games and he was very happy. He was a plus eight on shot power. I play him and now he goes down to happy, but... You got the play and you went from very happy to happy. Do you want to just stay in your cottage and not even come to the matches? Because I'll do that, bro. I'll keep you in the reserves all season long if it, if it makes you happy. 
Um, I have no uh, desire to really play you anyway. So if you're happy not even ca coming to my office and saying boo, then it uh, works for me, Bello. Scalia back to captain. Okay, so match five of five. We have three wins and one draw. Let's end off the episode on a high note. Projected for 35 goals via Biani, as I just caught that at the, at the tail end of that little graphic. Feel free to pause if you want to see it. But at Stadio Polisportivo, here we go for match number five. Five goals in his last three games. Let's see if he can continue to add to it. Oh, Aloy. Beautiful. Wow. That's just a thing of beauty. Bia Biani just flicks it to him. And he says, where am I going? Bang. 1-0. What are those celebrations? I don't get these celebrations where they just <laughs> jump and stand there. But a nice little back heel through ball flick. And Salvatore Aloy puts us up early. 1-0. Aloy has really turned into a first team player on this team. Where he was originally more of a sub. But Koulibaly and... Um, Luke Perini have been more on the bench than, than Oger and Aloy recently, who have become my new 1-2 tandem in the center mid with a center defensive mid, usually being Kopani, but more interchangeable. Biabiani puts it through to Moscati on the wing. Moscati, who can he find? It's Aloy. Don't tell me he has more in his boots. Oh my goodness. Salvatore Aloy, 2-0. Boom. 2-0 in the 22nd minute. Salvatore Aloy, I don't know where this guy came from, I don't know who he is, I don't know who he thinks he is, but he is turning into a monster here in Sicily. Outside curve, sheesh, beautiful. That is his fifth goal in Serie B, I believe he's second in team scoring, right behind Biabiani of course. Put it through Bello, oh here's Moses, break that sound barrier Chuck, what do you got for me? Oh wow, almost flipped it in the top left corner, nice opportunity. Whoa, 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 what is that? Nice save for Vandevoort, who's lead, leading Serie B in uh, clean sheets as well. I think he's at 10 or 11. I should check who's leading the league in assists and clean sheets right after this match. Biani, nice through ball. Gets advantage, here we go. Moscati pulls it back. That defender flew into another universe. Don't tell me, Aloy. Oh, my goodness. Big save there. Salvatore Aloy is hungry tonight and he wants that hat trick. Biabiani. Aloy still has it. Oh my goodness. Is that a pen? Yes, it is. It's a pen. Too bad I don't even know how to take these very well. I'm better at taking free kicks than pens in FIFA 20. Modolo, the captain, draws the pen. Was that so? Aloy, sorry, draws the pen. Terrible call. Not even close to being a pen, I'd say. But we'll take it. We'll take it. Biabiani, I don't think I'm going to make Biabiani take it. I think I want Aloy taking this. Their pens are pretty much the same. Boop, right there. Aloy. Oh, wow. Guessed the right way, but I still got it. But Aloy gets the hat trick. Open up the phone. Oh, my goodness. Call the Italian Prime Minister and just let him know that he's coming for supper. Hat trick for the Trapani star. Six goals on the year. Three on the night for Salvatore Aloy. Barely got that to go. It's the first goal I scored in a pen in FIFA, that's for sure. 70th minute, and we're up 3-0. For all well, you Easter Egg Hunters, that celebration that Aloy did was something that some NBA stars, and even high school basketball stars, are known to do after hitting three-pointers. And that being his third goal, I thought it would be quite appropriate to hit that celebration. Bro, just give Aloy one more rip. Bang! Oh, puts it wide. You know what? He deserves... He's, uh, he's earned uh, a couple of mistakes. Let's get a couple subs just so we can get the appearances in. Seven shots for Aloy tonight with three goals. I'm not sure how many shots were on target. I think I'd say four... I'd say five or six were on target. And that's the end of this one, boys. We go four wins and one draw through our five matches today. A hat-trick for Salvatore Aloy as he goes to get the game ball. Seven attempts, three goals. A great, great match for him. Wearing the captain's band even at the end since Scalia got subbed off. One for the books. Shots were 8-2 to two in the end. And Aloy, of course, gets the match ball, the game ball, with a 10.0 rating. Biabiani was an 8.8 .8 as he had two assists. Moscati had the other. Patrick is something we rarely see nowadays. What is your take on Aloy's performance? What am I going to say? Primed and ready, breathtaking, a role model? Let's say breathtaking. Um, I, my breath was taken away. Literally every single... Post-match, I say, they say, do you think we have what it takes to keep going? We're expecting a little, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, give them full credit. The Italian leader, aren't they tired of asking the same questions? The papers must be tired of printing these same things. 
And what do you want over here? The recent uh, chances you've given me in the team in a lot? Okay, good. The, he got, he's happy with the 20 seconds that he played last match. Uh, you know what, bro? I'm proud of you. Pat him on the back. We, had, we shed a few tears in my office. I'm like a father to him, probably. So heading into next episode, we will be second in the table with 41 points. We're seven points behind Empoli. Uh, Bia Biani is second in the league scoring, tied there with 13 goals. Assists, Scalia is tied for the league lead with six. Bia Biani has five, which is very nice. Clean sheets, Van de Voort leads the league with 12. Uh, yellow cards, I don't think we have anyone leading the way. You need red cards, we have a few of those people in there. Hoiver, Armini, uh, Strandberg. But we are looking good. Next episode will be a wild one as we begin with taking on Empoli. A huge three points that'll be if we can get them. Then followed by a, uh, a cup match against Udinese. Then three more league games against Perugia, Ascoli, and Salerno. Again, those last two before we head into the winter transfer window. So thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button as I'm putting out daily NHL and FIFA content. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments section. And I will see you in the next one.